In this lesson we'll graph f of x equals the greatest integer of x minus two, as well as f of x equals the greatest integer of the quantity x minus three, using the TID4 graphing calculator. You may recognize that if you know how to graph the basic floor function or greatest integer function, here we'd have a shift down two units of that basic function, and here we'd have a shift right three units of the basic floor function. But again, we'll graph these on the graphing calculator and then by hand. So we'll first press y equals. From here we'll press math. Right arrow wants to number. We want to select option five for the greatest integer. So we can press number five or we can arrow down to number five. Press enter. And then we have x, close parenthesis, and then minus two. Now I should mention, if you have an older version of the T83 or 84, you'll probably have to go to this far left here and select the dashed option by pressing enter several times. Until it looks like this. With the newer version, you don't have to do this, so I'm gonna press enter one more time to go back to the solid option. And now to make sure we all have the standard window, let's press zoom six which automatically sets the axes to go from negative 10 to positive 10 along the x-axis and the y-axis. Now to graph this on our paper, notice how our axes go from negative five to five, so now let's adjust the window. So press the window key and change the min and max values to negative five and positive five. So negative five, enter, five, enter, and negative five, enter, five, enter. Now we'll press graph again. Now this is a decent graph of our function, but we should recognize that for a floor function or the greatest integer function, for each segment that we see here, one end point would be a closed point and one would be an open point. So to begin, let's go ahead and sketch this piece on our paper. Then we'll determine whether the end points are closed or open. Notice how on the interval from zero to one, we have this constant segment, y equals negative two. And then to the right, each segment is shifted up one unit, and to the left, each segment is shifted down one unit. So we start with this segment here. To the right, we'd shift it up one unit. And to the left, down one unit. Again, this is not complete because we still want to determine whether the left side is an open or closed point, and whether the right side is open or closed. Going back to the calculator, if we wanted to, we could press the trace key, and notice how this would tell us that our function does contain the point zero, negative two, so there would be a closed point here. And if we press second calc, and then option one for value, we could press x equals one here, and notice when we press enter, the function value is not down here on this piece at y equals negative two, it jumps to y equals negative one, which means we'd have an open point on the right side of this segment and a closed point on the left. And that's really all we need to know to make a nice graph. Again, we knew the function contained the point zero, negative two, so we have a closed point here. And then when x was one, the function value jumped to negative one here so we have a closed point here, so we have an open point on the right side of this piece. And the pattern will be consistent. Each left side will have a closed point, each right side will have an open point. So open here, and we have closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, and so on. Closed, open, closed, open, and closed, open. And now we have a nice graph of our function. If we did want to check some function values though, we could use the table feature of the calculator. Let's show that as well. So to do that, let's go ahead and press second table set. And let's go down to independent and highlight ask. If you don't already have this, press enter. And now we'll press second graph. So again, let's check the function values along this piece here from zero to one. So x is zero, enter. Let's try point one, enter, point five, enter, 
point eight, enter. Notice all the function values are negative two, point nine, enter. But as soon as we enter the x value of one, the function value or y value jumps to negative one, verifying we have this piece graphed correctly. And when x is positive one, the function value is up here at negative one, not down here at negative two. So our graph looks good. Let's try our second example. Let's go back to y equals clear y1, and we'll press again math, right arrow to number, option five. So this time I'll just press the number five. And we want x minus three, close parenthesis. And now let's press graph. Now let's press trace. Notice how here we can see the function does contain the point zero, negative three, and it appears the function value remains negative three until we reach x equals positive one. Let's go ahead and sketch this one piece of our function. So we'll plot the point zero, negative three. So we know this is going to be a closed point here. And we have a segment here that's one unit long, but we can probably figure out by now this is going to be an open point at the right. We'll verify this in just a moment. Once again, notice how as we move to the right, the segments shift up one unit, and to the left they shift down one unit. So we'd have these segments to the right, and to the left they'd be shifted down one unit. Before we complete this though, let's verify the open and closed points on the left and right one more time. So again, from here we could press second trace, option one for value, and then we'll check the function value when x is one. Notice how when we do this, the function value does jump to negative two. So this does verify we'd have an open point on the right and a closed point on the left for each piece of our function. So again, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, and so on. If we were asked to complete a table of values, as long as we're still in ask mode, again by pressing second window for table set and highlighting ask, if we go to the table now by pressing second graph, for example, I could enter the x value of negative two, negative 1.9, negative 1.8, negative 1.1, and negative one, and this verifies that on this interval here, notice how the function values are negative five, but as soon as we reach x equals negative one, the function value jumps to negative four. So close point here, open point here. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.